I hope y'all had a good Chuseok. Uh, I had a pretty good Chuseok, but it was a, a short break for me. Um, I didn't eat that much. I didn't really, um, you know, the good thing about eating not, not eating that much is um, this shirt is not a new shirt. It's a shirt I got a couple of years ago, but I was never able to wear it because it was too small. Anyway, so I'm, I have lots of clothes like that. It looks like I got all these new clothes, but they're clothes that I got a long time ago as a gift or something like that. And then they were too small to wear, like the belly would be protruding like this. And, um, and I couldn't wear it, but I, I'm wearing it now. So it's kind of nice. Thank God. Um, I didn't eat that much, and uh, I ended up going to China uh, last week. Do you know this? How do you know? I told you. Oh, okay. Um, well, I also told you that uh, for those of you who were here uh, last week during Chuseok Sunday, uh, there was going to be something uh, for you today, but, and this is a big but, uh, <laughs> I was in China, and uh, I wasn't able to uh, bring anything from China. I was going to bring something, you know, something cheap made in China, uh, something for you guys. But what I ended up doing was I ended up getting this huge teddy bear for uh, my baby. Uh, and so, you know, I couldn't carry anything else. It was just this huge 18,001 big old thing. It was nice. So uh, for those of you who are here for Chiseok Sunday last Sunday, uh, don't worry, next week you'll get something, probably not made in China. Uh, uh, but then again, isn't like everything made in China, right? So anyway, you'll get something, uh, something good next week. So um, make sure you come to church next week. On the way to China, it was me, Pastor Eddie, and uh, Pastor Sang Min. We went to the airport, and uh, we had some time before our flight, so we stopped by at a coffee shop, at a cafe. And we were sitting at the cafe in the airport, and we're drinking coffee, and we're talking about different things. But I heard all this noise in the back, uh, you know, some people arguing, complaining, something, but I didn't really pay much, much attention. On the way to the terminal to get on our plane, Pastor Eddie says to me, hey, man, Pastor Philip, those people over there, they were Christians. I said, yeah, so? And he goes, they were so mean to the server the, the, at the coffee shop. Uh, apparently, they were on the same plane we were on, and um, they were just complaining. Why is it taking so long? What's, what's wrong with you? And, and, and my, my plane is leaving soon, and you, you guys are taking too long. And oh, Okay, forget it then. Just, just give it to us to go, right? So then they had to package it nice so that they take it to go. And then they finally got it. And when they got it, they go, oh, hey, we still have some time. Let's sit and eat. So they sit down and they unwrap everything and they're eating and they're complaining and talking about uh, the server and, the, and, and all these things. And then I said to Pastor Eddie, how do you know they were Christians? And then he goes, you can tell by the way they were talking to each other, the things that they said. They were for all from the same church and they were going to China together. And I'm like, man, that's so wrong. Don't you feel that way? When we got to China, me and uh, Pastor Eddie, we were talking about, you know, this and that. We are talking about, like, these good things that somebody did for me. Uh, a, a couple of years ago, somebody did something really good, for, good to me or good for me. And we were talking about that. And he goes, yeah, who was that person? And I go, oh, that person wasn't a Christian. And then we looked at each other and we said, yeah, you know, it's all the Christians that cause all the problems. And all the nice people are non-Christians. Something wrong with that, isn't there? Anyway, uh, I wanted to share from 1 Timothy chapter 4, just one verse, 1 Timothy 4.16. This is something that I uh, kind of shared with uh, the people over in China. Um, 1 Timothy 4.16. Let's read it together. Ready, begin. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Amen. Watch your life and doctrine closely. 
If you've been coming to STEM for a while, then you kind of know what I emphasize, what our em ministry tends to emphasize, what we tend to focus on. We focus on these two things. We focus on life, the way we live our lives as Christians, the way we live our lives as children of God. We focus on our life and our doctrine, the Bible, the Word of God. What does the Bible say? Correctly understanding and correctly handling the Word of God. Those are the two things that we emphasize. Our theme verse, our theme verse, our, our ministry verse is, is right there in verse 12, right? Look at it in verse 12. It says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. It's in front of your bulletin every single Sunday some of you don't even know, though, right? Read, read it. it. It's there. That's what we want to focus on. That's what we want to do. We want to be an example for everyone through the way we live our life. My email and my phone number is there as well, but nobody ever contacts me for anything. And when they do need something, they come up to me and they say, Pastor Philip, what's your phone number? It's there every week. Somewhere. Setting an example for others through the way we live our life. What good is it if we know a lot of things, if we have all the right answers to all the spiritual, biblical questions that people ask? What good is it if we know all the answers, but it doesn't affect the other person? Living a life of influence, as you know, that's my goal in life, right? My purpose in life, my goal in life, the thing that I want to accomplish when I die on my tombstone, I want it to be said, actually, I don't want a tombstone. You know, when I, when I die, can I just tell you guys, just in case, you know, my wife forgets, uh, when I die, I don't want a tombstone. I don't want, like, you know, my body cremated and put in a little jar and then placed in a cupboard somewhere. And once a year, you have to come and say, how you doing? Uh, I don't want any of that stuff. I want, I want my body, I don't know, to be donated to, I don't know who would want my body parts. But, you know, just, just to make the best use of my body as possible and, and, and just disappear. I just want to disappear. I just want to be gone. I don't, I don't want people to, you know, feel obligated to pay respects to my memory and, 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 and things like that. Anyway, but if I, if I did want it, on my tombstone, what I would want is, here lies a man who was influential. Or here lies a man who was useful. I want to be useful. I don't want to live this life, breathe everyone else's oxygen, and die. What a useless life that is. I want to be a person of influence. But being a person of influence is not someone who has all the answers to everything. That doesn't do anything. Me and, and, and Pastor Eddie and Pastor Sangmin, when we went to China, it's an awesome thing. We went to China to run a retreat for university and, and graduate students, foreign university students studying in China. They're going to medical school, law school, business school, architecture, these kinds of things. So these are uh, people who are studying these amazing majors. They're, they're studying these things, but they're not Chinese. They're from Africa, different parts of Africa. India, Japan, uh, Russia. I met a third generation uh, Korean Russian. She couldn't speak any co Korean. Her parents couldn't speak any Korean. Uh, but, she's but she's Korean, but she's Russian. That was cool. Okay. Um, but it was for these foreign students because only foreigners are allowed to go to this church. Chinese aren't allowed to go to this church because the government says you can't. Okay, and so then every once in a while, the, the government officials walk into the church and check everybody's passports, make sure that they're all foreigners there. Okay, uh, it's kind of sad, uh, 
but, but be, when we went, the missionary there, she said, would you please talk about this and share about that? And so me and Pastor Sangmin and Pastor Eddie, we prepared this entire retreat, 10 seminars in three days. Actually, 10 seminars in uh, half day, the first day, and then the next day, one full day, and then the morning. So just two full days, uh, 10 seminars. It was amazingly, for me, it was boring. But, you know, for, for them, they loved it. But here's why they loved it. The first day we went there, we shared what we, what we, what we prepared, all these answers that we had to questions that they might have. We shared all of this knowledge to them. And so then they took notes, and it was great. But when we got there, we were expecting 20 or 30 people, you know, foreign students. We were going to sit in a circle and just have discussions and stuff. But then we realized that that wasn't because there were 80 of them, okay? And so we realized when we met them and talked to them the first day that what we had prepared doesn't really fit them. And so you know what we did? We stayed up until late at night, me and the other pastors, in our dingy, dark and dirty motel room. Um, we were there. We were planning the next two days, brand new, staying up until 2 in the morning. Should we do this? Should we do that? Yeah, let's talk about this. Why don't you take care of this area? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And we just changed everything up for the sake of these students. Now, we had, if you guys don't know, for pastors, like preaching and sharing, that's a lot of stress, and that's a lot of pressure. And we don't want to look stupid in front of the people. So we make sure that we're well prepared, okay? But here, we had to prepare something overnight. And so the next day, the second day of this conference, it was completely different from what we had planned. We had to, while one guy was giving his seminar, the other two guys were at Starbucks working on new things. And then, and, and, oh my goodness. But we did that. And somehow they found out about it. And they appreciated it so much. I mean, the second day, we had five seminars from 9.15 to 10.30, from 10.45 to 12.15, from, from 2 o'clock to 3.15, from 4, whatever, 3.30 to 4.50, and then dinner, and then we had a worship at night. I mean, whoa, it was lots of stuff. But they appreciated it, not because we were teaching them great things, we were teaching them some good things. But, but you know, but it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily the content of our teaching, but the fact that they knew that we flew all the way to China just to meet them, just to share with them, just to encourage them, just to help them. And when we found out that what we had prepared didn't really match their needs, we changed everything around. And they knew about it, and, and it was our actions that really moved them. At the end of the conference, they were so thankful. They were so grateful. We didn't have tons of time to prepare, so we didn't have our best stuff, you know, because we didn't have so much time to prepare. But we prayed and we asked God just to help us. You know, during break time, talking to these students, praying for them. You know, we just met them for the first time. They were so cool. I love Africans. Don't you love when, when you worship with a bunch of Africans? It's like, it's awesome. There's this guy named Yamalin. Yamalin, right? And he gives the announcements. And when he goes up to give the announcements, he goes up. There's always a guy back there going, Yamalin. You know, and like, what the? <laughs> What's it? Yamalin. Just encouraging him, you know. Because Yamalin's a kind of a soft-spoken guy, you know. He kind of. Okay, if you please, just kind of, you know, and then back, Yamalin. It was so amazing. They're so, they're, they're so encouraging. And during the praise, you know, one of the sisters, she's like, I can't even do it. That, you know, that sound, you know. Anyway, um, and, and, and dancing, and, and it, was, it was really amazing. But the fact that we were there to, to, to encourage them, and they really, Love that. It's not because we were smart, we were geniuses, we were charismatic, we were, you know, it's none of that stuff. It was just our action. The Bible says, watch your life and doctrine closely. It doesn't mean that our knowledge is not important. We need to study the Word of God. We need to know the Word of God. We need to have correct doctrine. That's what doctrine is, just correct ideas about what the Bible says 
what the Bible says about God, what the Bible says about human beings, what the Bible says about our relationship with God. Okay, we need to know it. We need to know this stuff very, very well. The Bible says, watch your life and your doctrine closely. Persevere in them. That means don't give up. Because if you do, if you persevere in them, you will save both yourself and your hearers. You will be people of influence. You will be useful to others. And that's what I think life is all about. God didn't put me on this earth so that I could worship God personally. You know, oh, God, you're so good to me, and you're so amazing to me, and I love you so much, and you solve all my problems, and you always make me feel good about myself, and, and God, you're perfect, and so you never make mistakes, so I must be perfect too. And thank you so, so much for all the stuff that you're doing for me in my life. And, oh, you're my personal God, but God, it's just between you and me. And, oh, I love you, Lord, and then I die. That's... That's not why God put us on this earth. God made us. God created us. God knows us. We don't have to tell him all about ourselves. But we need to do what God called us to do in this world. Watch your life. Watch the way you live your life. And the Bible is just so full of examples of people living their life for God. God commanding that we take care of widows and orphans. Right? Symbols for those people who are less fortunate, those people who are suffering in this world. Right? Through our actions, we will be saved. Not salvation like I'm saved because of my good works. But we will be people of influence through the way that we live our lives. And that will encourage others. There's a, a former... STEM student named June, and she uh, is in college. She's a third-year university student right now, and she's studying. Sh she's studying in uh, Shanghai as an exchange student. And so, when I went to Dalian for the um, conference, after that conference was done, I went to Shanghai. Why? To look at all the sites, to eat Shanghainese food. To, to enjoy the fresh Shanghai air. Shanghai doesn't have fresh air. It's just nasty. Uh, oh, my gosh. And then they have this, like, fermented uh, tofu. They call it stinky tofu. And you know why they call it stinky tofu? It's stinky. Oh, my goodness. It's like you smell it on your clothes later. And so anyway, but those are not the reasons why I went to Shanghai. The only reason I went to Shanghai was because I wanted to encourage her to say, hey, how you doing? Are you studying well? Are you doing okay? How's your relationship with God? But here's the thing. I didn't tell her a lot of things. I didn't get the Bible out and tell her, okay, you have to live your life like this and you have to do this and that. And, and while you're in Shanghai, you should do this and this. I didn't do that. All I did was I showed up at Shanghai, and said, I'm here to spend some time with you. I want to encourage you. And this really moved her. She sent me an email, and if you know June at all, she doesn't send emails, okay? You know those people who are really, like, <laughs> difficult to, you know, those just, just difficult people. Those people, you know, you, you text message them, and they never answer back, you know? On their Kakao Talk, there's like 87 notifications, right? Because they keep getting it, but they don't reply, right? <coughs> She's kind of like one of those people. She doesn't, you know, and she doesn't reply. But, but here's what she did. Uh, when I, on my flight from Shanghai back to Seoul, I thought, you know what, um, I, I should email her. I should, I should say something to her. When I arrived in Seoul, I turned on my phone, and there's an email waiting for me already. And she had written to me. And she was impressed. She was touched. She was moved. Not because I said anything to her, but just that action. My pastor loves me. My pastor cares about me. This is how you move people. This is how you influence them. This is how we become useful through our actions. Watch your life and your doctrine closely. 
You know, you have arguments with your atheist friends. You have arguments with your non-Christian friends. And they say, well, prove to me that God exists. Prove to me that Jesus, a man, is able to rise from the dead on the third day. Prove to me that the earth was created and not just came to be by, by itself. And you would argue and things like that. You know what? Hours and hours and hours of arguments are not as effective as one act of kindness, one act of self-sacrifice, one act of love to this friend. Be smart. God didn't create us so that we can argue with people. He created us as a body of Christ to be people of influence. The Bible says to shine our light. That's influence. Wherever light goes, you know what happens? Wherever light goes, you know what happens? You guys, scientists, you guys know? What happens when light goes somewhere? It gets bright. That's effect. That's influence. That's help. You guys understand? Stop arguing with people. Stop thinking, oh, I'm so smart and I have all the answers. It means nothing if we're not living the life. How did you influence your family during Chuseok? It's about the way we live our life, man. I'm, I'm your pastor. I'm here and I'm preaching. Sometimes my sermons are good. Sometimes my sermons aren't so good. Sometimes I say things that you've heard for the first time and it's really wonderful. Other times I say the same thing. You've heard it a hundred times before and it doesn't really affect you. But it's not necessarily the things that I say here that affect you. I hope that it's the relationship that we have. The things that I do that matter. I hope the fact that I'm standing out there in, in, in front of the door, hugging each of you as you walk in every Sunday. And you know, I don't do those fake hugs. You know what fake hugs I'm talking about? Oh, hi. I don't do those. I mean it when I hug you. I mean it. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Let's have that relationship. Let's, let's have... You know, you don't impress me with your, I'm number one in my school. I'm number one in my class. That doesn't impress me. Kind of impresses me a little bit, though, you know, because it is hard to do in Korea. Uh, you know, it's kind of hard to do. It impresses me a little bit. But more than that is how you live your life. Persevere in it. Don't give up. You'll be people of influence, the kind of people God wants you to be. Let's pray. Let's take a couple of minutes to pray to the Lord at this time. If you've been too focused on doctrine, if you've been too focused on right knowledge, if you've been too focused on yourself, you need to pray a prayer of repentance to the Lord. And say, God, please forgive me for focusing on the wrong things, for being completely imbalanced unbalanced in, in the way that I live my life, having no influence on others, being self-satisfied with the knowledge that I have, but having no influence on others. And God, please forgive me for that. Let's pray and ask God for forgiveness. Some of us, we try to live a life of influence, but we haven't been successful. But we need God's strength and His wisdom. Ask for wisdom. The Bible says if we ask for wisdom, God will give us wisdom. God, how can I be a person of influence to my friends, to my family? What can I do? What kind of actions should I take? How should I live my life? Some of us, we do have the right ideas and we know what to do, but we're lazy. We're lazy or we fall into temptation or we fall into sin. And we need God's strength. We need to pray about that. So why don't we just, wherever you are in your life right now, in terms of living a life of influence, just pray to the Lord honestly and ask God to really help you to live a life of influence. Some of you are too shy and you think you can't do it. You can't live a life of influence. 
there's no such thing. Yes, you can be shy, but you can still be influential towards others by the way you live your life. So why don't we pray for a couple of minutes? Let's pray. We praise you, Father, for who you are. And we praise you for what you've done. That Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Jesus taught us, not just through the parables, not just through his sermons, but Jesus taught us through his life. Ultimately, he gave his life for us. Lord, help us to be people of influence. Help us to watch our life closely. Help us not to give up so that we may be people of influence who influence others to the way of salvation. Please give us wisdom and strength, diligence and patience. In Jesus' name we pray.